everyone we apologize that we're late um we had a couple of things that we had to take care of with this broadcast and we are excited to be back once again for counseling tip tuesday that's what it is counseling tip tuesday let's see make sure i got my sound turned down on this there we go there we go come on in come on in everybody's coming on in this is going to be an exciting segment a very good segment um, we got Yul Netta, we got Wanda Bailey, we got a number of different people that are starting to show up in the, uh, in the setting. We're, we're excited about what's going on. So we're going to give just a few minutes. Um, we apologize. We're about 15 minutes late getting started. But again, we had to set some. We couldn't get the broadcast started when I haven't had everything set up and on point. So I'm excited about it today. Go ahead. You know what to do. Share the video. Share the video. Share the video. Make sure you share it right now on your page while everyone is on their lunch break. They get an opportunity to get some counseling tips. Glory to God. Glory to God. And that's going to be a real big blessing right there. That's going to be a real big blessing. Um, I want want to talk about some things. Keith Ellis, my brother. We love you too, you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to shout you out on this on this segment, as a matter of fact, about the upcoming album. So we're excited about that. Go ahead. Share the video. This is your opportunity to like, comment and share. Yeah. Um, and we'll get started. I guess we'll go ahead and get started and get set up. Are you able to find it? I am. I'm just trying to make sure that. Hey, Brandy, she says I'm here. Ah, that she our in there. On, um, on Solutions Counseling page can see it. Okay. So I'm just trying to make sure that. All right. We changed the setup a little bit. We've been working on some big things and we are excited about some of the things that God is doing with us. So we'll go ahead and get started for everybody. Uh, Just saying what's up to everybody. This is your Culture Shift Podcast, uh, better known for the people that are on Facebook, our followers on Facebook, better known as Counseling Tip Tip Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right. Counseling Tip Tuesday. Uh, We are your hosts and this is the lovely Dr. Felicia Young. Oh, stop it. This is my wonderful, awesome, amazing and handsome husband. Dr. Johnny Young Jr. Yeah, and today's broadcast is brought to you by New Covenant Christian Center right there in Baker, Louisiana, 6515 East Myrtle Avenue. This is pastored by the one, the only Bishop Michael L. Smith. Amen. New Covenant Christian Center where their service times are Sunday morning at 11 a.m., Wednesday nights at 730. So if you get an opportunity to fellowship, make sure you get by there Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., Thursday nights at 7 30 for bible study there to be a great opportunity for you to yes, fellowship and also pastor lady dion smith is over there as well lady dion uh, awesome smith awesome woman of god who um has also does some counseling as well does counseling as yes. well glory yes. to god Double barrel. so yes definitely go and check them out it's a wonderful place to worship Amen on Sunday. Amen. Now we've added we've added something to the show. We've added um, an opportunity to give relationship quotes, and we had so many uh, people to comment um, at a short period of time about what should be a great relationship quote to quote today. And we're gonna just choose two of them very quickly. Uh, our relationship quotes for today comes from Michelle Burton and Tramika Jackson. Uh, both of them gave some very good quotes. Everybody gave very good quotes. Yes. So we thank you for participating in that. Everybody gave some very good quotes. So we're going to go ahead and go uh, with Michelle Jackson. Uh, Michelle Burton, excuse me. Michelle Burton quote is challenges. Challenges can either be a wedge or a drive. Uh, it, it, it can either be. Excuse me. Let me quote it again. <laughs> Michelle Burton's quote is challenges can either be a wedge to drive you apart or a nail to bind you closer together. It's like your that. choice. I it's like your that. choice. It is. It That's is. a good quote. It Who is. you got over there? I have Tramika Jackson. Tramika Jackson. Tramika Jackson. And she said this. She said, don't just bring yourself to the table when you both have to eat. The sacrifice is made between the two. Wow. I like that. The sacrifice is made between the two. Yes. That's important. That's so important. That's a I good quote. When I sit at the table, I should have my husband in mind. Ah, yeah. Amen. Oh, look at your earrings. Come on. You like these? I like your earrings. I went to this awesome um, women's conference this weekend, and Lady Felice Allen, if she's watching, I'm wearing my earrings. Y'all got to go check her out. Go to her page, Lady Felice Allen. Actually, it's on there as Felice Allen. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
On she, Facebook. On That's Facebook. That's Fanice Allen. Fanice Allen. And she has jewelry. She has clothes. And she even has a daughter, Francesca Ubre, will style you with the clothes that you buy. Come on, Jesus. Wow, 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 Check wow. So they, 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 they give you the jewelry and style you with the clothes. Well, they don't give it to you. You got to buy it. But yes. I mean, that's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Ain't nobody giving you nothing. I mean, I don't days. want nobody going over there saying that, that Bishop and First Lady said that you giving away stuff. No, no we're not giving away anything. Get your coins we're, together. Get your coins together. So we want to thank Michelle Burton and we want to thank Tramika Jackson uh, for those relationship quotes for the day. We thank you so much for assisting in Counseling Tip Tuesday. For everybody that's just getting in, make sure you share the video. Make sure you get an opportunity to share the video. You heard us uh, shout out our broadcast was brought to you today by New Covenant Christian Center. Yes. Uh, make sure that you get a chance to go over there and fellowship with them. Again, that information is 6515 East Myrtle Avenue, Baker, Louisiana. That's Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., Wednesday nights at 730 for Bible study. Make sure you get an opportunity to get by there and fellowship with them. Amen. Now on to today's subject. Ooh, we got a good one. We got a good one. We got a good one. We have, um, we're going to talk about four toxic habits that may be ruining your relationship. Mm. Four toxic habits that may be ruining, whoa. Whoa, that's going to be a good one right there. Listen, share this video and tell everybody you need to get in on this. Come Four on. toxic habits that may be ruining your relationship. Now, every relationship, Doc, um, is special and unique in its own way because you have individuals that are in a relationship. So you can never really compare any relationship like another. That's one of the mistakes you can make. Definitely. When you're trying to compare that relationship with somebody else mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to uh, make make it look like somebody else's relationship. Right. Because it's individualized. That's right. Uh, but there are some uh, fundamental aspects of marriage that are universal or relationships that are universal mm -hmm. that we need to be aware of. And um, actually, that's what this exercise, that's what we're going to talk about in this segment to talk about the four toxic things that may be working in a relationship that every relationship need to stay away from these four toxic things. Yeah. If they're going to be successful, yeah. um, if they're going and these things right under the radar. Yeah, they operate in stealth mode. You don't know that they're really working. That, that's what I was going to say. You know, so you mean to tell me my habits, what I can be doing is toxic to my relationship. Whoa, whoa, yeah. So I guess the first thing we want to do is de define what toxic is. Okay. So that we can know if we are doing things that are contaminating the relationship. So speaking of contamination, the, the first definition for toxic is contamination. Wow. If wow. something is toxic, it's, it can be contaminating. It's, it's venomous and poisonous. Wow. It's cancerous, a virus, or an infection. All infection, infectious. All of those things are the definition for toxic. Now, listen what it's talking about. This is talking about the habits that we have in the relationship. Mm -hmm. These are our habits in the relationship. Mm. Our habits. In it. This is stuff that we've really developed ourselves to do consistently that are working against. And you said that if it's toxic, there are four different things that we may have developed a habit for in our relationship that is contamin contamin uh, contamination, mm -hmm. venomous. You say mm -hmm. that's like a snake. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that my habits can release venom in the relationship and actually make it infectious or cancerous. Right. Right. Wow. And a, a habit is something that we do daily, like uh, coming in and taking our shoes off in a certain place. Yeah. That, that could be a habit. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. Coming in and going straight to the refrigerator. That can be a habit. Yeah. Yeah, the habit. I mean, habits is something you just do on a consistent basis where you do it at second nature. Uncon unconsciously. Unconsciously. Yeah. Unconsciously. Unconsciously. Yeah. That's a very good point. So I want to talk about, I mean, just first, let's start off with, um, we hear a lot of terminology about toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. What a toxic relationship is, is nothing more than two individuals that are unhealthy in certain areas. That's all it is. The relationship itself may not necessarily be toxic or it is not toxic without the individuals having some toxic toxic say the word for me uh, toxicity there you go That's toxicity that is, in so their relationship i can be practicing 
have toxic practices and then my lay my 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 relationship therefore be labeled as a toxic relationship yeah it's toxic because i won't make the adjustments i won't make the changes i won't grow and develop i won't get rid of the toxic habits the relationship is only toxic when the two individuals are toxic themselves in some areas mm -hmm. so that's what we want to work on today we want to really just point out those four major areas that um that may be toxic and may be ruining your relationship and you don't even know it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now, let's dive ooh, into them. Let's dive into one, them. This, this first, first one? one. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, okay. I, I want you. I want. I, I want you to make an agreement. Our audience to make an agreement that no matter how tough this gets, that you finish it to the end. Because I mean, we always have to go through it first, right? Wow. We always have, we to, have to go, go through, through it first. first. So it, we, we might cut you open, but we, I promise you, we're gonna stitch you back up. And anyway. <laughs> we're gonna stitch you back up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I tell you what, this is what we're going to do. Uh, if we're gonna make an agreement that we finish it to the end, mm -hmm. let's also make an agreement that we don't hear what is being said and then automatically think of our spouse. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Let's make That's an agreement good. to say, let me take a closer look at me. Yeah. To make sure that I get rid of my toxic habits so that the relationship can flourish. That's right. Because I believe that it's not my accident or incident that you're hearing this today. If you're hearing this today, God is an intentional God. He is not giving you this for a three-way call for somebody else. I'm telling wow. you, you, wow. we're talking to you. Wow. So with that being said, you, the first toxic habit that you could have to ruin your relationship is the habit of refusing to listen. That's the first toxic habit. That's the first toxic habit. Refusing to listen. Refusing to listen. We all have a tendency to view the world from our viewpoint and our position. And we don't automatically think that there, there, more, more, there may be more than one way to address a situation. But there is. And God desires for us to experience success and victory. And this is the reason he has joined us together with our spouse. Our spouse provides a different viewpoint, giving us a multi-angle point of view. Now, hold up. Hold up. You just said something. You said the God desires for us to experience success and victory. And that's the whole reason he joined me to you. Wow. Because you give me, what did you call it? A multi-angle viewpoint. Come on. Wow, man, that is that is loaded right there. Everybody, I need you to really, really listen to that point right there. That the reason why God joined me with you is because he wanted me to have a multi-angle viewpoint that would aid and assist in my victory and success as a family in life. Mm -hmm. So when I don't listen to you, I shut off an angle that I don't have access to. Wow. Yes. Wow. I shut off a viewpoint. I shut off a perspective that I don't necessarily have access to. So God brought me with you so that I can have that view. And here I am shutting it off, saying, I don't want to listen to you or I don't listen to you. or I shut you down and I don't let you have any voice in the relationship. So there may be a time that you said something that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't have to listen to you. Yeah. And then you said something else. And I said, I'm, I'm not listening to you. And so then I developed the habit of <laughs> yeah. not listening to you. You developed the habit. And then that habit begins to release venom. Has become toxic. Yeah. And cancerous to this relationship. So it may have been one thing that I said, you know, and it's, you might think it's harmless. So I said, I'm not listening to him. But you got to be careful. And you got to check that. Because when you say it one time and then you do it again and then it becomes a habit. You're going to miss out on something that God has for you. And that's what this is saying right now. Well, I, I don't think men struggle with this. Not listening. <laughs> oh, my, wait, y'all. I need a seatbelt. I almost fell out of my chair. I don't think men struggle with not listening. Ladies, do men actually struggle with not listening to you? I think the question you meant to ask was, um, does anybody have a man or oh, oh, man that they feel listens to them? That's the question you meant to ask. Oh, uh, do anybody have a man that they feel listen to yeah. them? All right. Well, I mean, it's important that we understand it because I'm just being uh, 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 sarcastic right or facetious right now. Uh -huh. Men do struggle with this because um, we, we, we have a tendency to listen with our ears, but our eyes are not involved. Our, our body language is not involved. So we can we can say we hear you, uh -huh. but that doesn't convey the message that I'm listening to you. If I want to listen to you, there are certain things that I need. What are some of the things I need to do to let you know I'm listening? I mean, you need to actually give me your eye contact. Okay. You need to give me your eye contact. You need active listening is you repeating back for clarity that you understood what I said. 
Okay, so I, I give you eye contact and I repeat back to you something that you said to yes. me um, just to make sure that I, I understand what is being said for clarity's sake and everything. That listening is going to be important. Yes, and uh, Dr. Ellis even said that uh, there's a study that showed that um, the idea of listening, being heard, being seen, being noticed also gives the other person a sense of acceptance. Okay. So you listening to me makes me feel accepted. Watch this. It also makes me feel respected. Wow. Wow. So if wow. you listening to me makes me feel respected. You not listening to me makes me feel disrespected. That, that's a very good point. So when I listen to you, when I give you my eyes, another way is my body language. Mm -hmm. I have to sit up and, and kind of lean into the conversation sometimes to show that I'm engaged in it. Yes. That I'm, I don't always have to do a lot of talking. Yes. But I do have to lean in, give you eye contact, uh, and all of this helps you feel respected. One of the things that is happening in your relationship, yes. if you have a spouse, if you have a wife or a husband that is constantly trying to communicate to you and you're not listening effectively, what you're doing to them, you're making them feel unwanted and disrespected in yes. the relationship. Yes. I don't care how much you pay the bills and how much um, uh, um, you, 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 you buy them things and mm -hmm. you you cook the food or whatever. If you're not listening the right way, you make them feel unwanted and disrespected. And what's the number one we do th these days in, in, in 2019? Okay, I heard you, but I, I can be, I can wow, admit it. Wow, I got wow. this game. So we're listening I on got the this phone. Game. Yeah, so we're together and you might be saying, oh, and me and might be saying, we spend all our time together. I'm with her all the time. Why is she saying that I don't listen to her? I don't spend no time with her. We could be physically, our bodies in the same room, but my mind could be on Tomb Blast and your mind could be on Facebook in another state somewhere. Wait, are we really connecting? Are I we mean, really together? And I'm glad you said connecting because I have down here as a note that when you fail to listen to your spouse, you are unable to truly connect. With, with that person. You can't connect to them if you don't listen to them. That's right. It's important because there are some things that are being said and then there are some things that are not being said wow. that we need to listen to. Yes. We need to give ourselves to that we need to truly listen. So the first toxic habit is refusing to listen. It's refusing to give yourself to the conversation yes. that is at hand by being distracted with your cell phone, by being distracted with TV, by being on the phone with your girlfriends or being on uh, 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 playing the game or something like that. Men really have to grow out of that playing the game all day thing. Yeah. You got to grow I'm, out of that, yeah. fellas. We got to grow out of that. It. Well, I mean, we asked about the men. We didn't ask about the women. Fellas, are there, are there instances, are there truly ladies, women that are out there where they be playing their game on the phone and they're not listening to you they just they don't give themselves some stuff that you want to talk about or are we the ones that are struggling with communicating and listening ourselves and not the women wow wow that's good um i read a study and it said that um i forgot how many times but the, uh, your man wives your man will make an attempt to connect to you and i think it was like 60 times or 80 times in an hour wow and it, it, it may not be like hey Give me your attention, but he may do something silly or crack a joke. And what he's doing, he's looking for a smile or a response out of you. So what we have to do, we have to protect ourselves from a root of bitterness because bitterness or unforgiveness will cause us to be like, get out of my face. I don't want, don't laugh. Don't make me laugh with you. And him trying to make you laugh is more than just him being silly. It's him trying to make a connection. It's wow. him trying to get a way in. Wow. And so we're not always conscious of that. So it's different. The men doesn't necessarily show their body language, uh, the eye contact, leaning in as far as listening. Sometimes that that's a problem that the men, I can say that's something that we need to work on. Um, but the women, on the other hand, when you're trying, when I'm trying to, my way of trying to make a connect to you is actually through touch and through humor and through mm -hmm. uh, uh, a physical affection or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. And if you continuously push me away, you make me feel unwanted and disrespected as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let's listen to what we're saying right now. What we're saying is this. The man feels connected if he sees a smile or a response. Sometimes. Yes. yes. It, and I got to see that smile. Men are weird. They they will in this one weird he will, yes weird <laughs> he will say they they want to see a reaction yes a smile is welcome in that but even if they don't get a smile if he'll say something like Felicia you know I don't like that but that's that's the effort of making that connection so if he knows that if 
if I'm into the game too much and he's saying something, I may not hear him. But if he says, Felicia. Yeah, that gets, that, that gets that attention. Okay, so he's looking for attention. But uh, that's for the men. And then on the other hand, women, we, we, need, we want your attention. Put your phone down. Yeah. Yeah, that's look, the equivalent of, of getting the reaction that we want. Put your phone down. Look, look, even if it's just for a minute. And it's going to take some sacrifice. I believe it was uh, Tramika Jackson that said that uh, uh, the sacrifice is made between the two. Yes. So it's going to take some sacrifice. And one of the things that we have to sacrifice, we have to make the effort to give, to fill up the tank. I want you to picture this as a gas tank, fellas. Fill up the tank throughout the week. Yes. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Because it's football season and when Sunday comes. Wow. We don't want to sit down and do a whole <laughs> lot of talking during the game uh, unless it's about the game. So if you fill up the tank and you make sure she's riding on full, then it won't be a thirst for it on Sunday unless there's an important issue. And if it's important, then we make the sacrifice okay. to go ahead and go so with it. So what you're saying is you, you actually, I'm, I'm a, he's speaking in code. He's saying, take us out Friday night. Friday, Friday night. Friday, spend some time with us. If you plan on ignoring us Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't, I didn't say I ignore. I didn't say ignore. I didn't say ignore. If you plan on saying, uh, get out of my face, the game is on on Sunday. Yeah. It will be soften it up. So yeah. Soften it up Saturday so we can be prepared on Sunday. Yes. Amen. Yeah. yeah, soften it up. Make sure the tank is on full yeah. so that you can go on. Um, I think we're going to transition to the next toxic. <laughs> habit the next toxic habit uh we're going to talk about we talked about refusing to listen number yeah. two the second toxic habit is making assumptions Ooh, wow that is a toxic mm. habit come on toy put that in the group for us right here on facebook number two making assumptions and this is what it says most of our toxic habits can be found in our assumptions towards our spouse mm. Many couples struggle with this important principle of communication. This is a communication principle. Yeah. Never assume anything. That's something you need to add to your relationship. Never assume anything as far as communication is concerned. Mm -hmm. This is what it's saying. It is better to clarify rather than to assume the other person knows, knows what you know, sees what you see, and has heard what you heard. So let's break this down. Let's unpack this and see what it's talking about. What it's actually saying is that if we have moments where you and I are communicating and we are doing, uh, we're talking about a particular subject, then I can't assume that you're clear on what I'm talking about. Yeah, you I see, can't. I had to wet my throat on that one. All right. So. Go ahead. Come on. Tell <laughs> her why you had to wet your throat on that one while I wet mine. Never make these assumptions. Make assumptions. We, we, we counsel couples all day, basically every day. And the number one thing the woman says is this. Well, he should know. Oh. He should know. I oh. shouldn't have to tell him. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell him. Ladies, we, we, that's what we say. I feel like we shouldn't have to tell him. He already know. This is saying, making an assumption, assuming that he should already know, saying he should already know is killing your relationship. Wow. It's killing it. Wow. So now you have to make you have to make a decision today. Do I love him? Do I want this relationship enough to say I'm going to stop saying he should know? And even if he should know, I'm going to tell him anyway, because I bet there's some other things that he should know that you feel like I don't care. I'm going to tell him anyway, because he needs to know this. He needs to hear me say this. Well, he needs to hear you say a lot of things. Wow. Now, can I be honest? When I when we first started studying this and it said making assumption is a toxic habit, I was like, Okay, so they're saying if I make an assumption, I'll make an assumption like I already know what he's going to do before he do it. But that's not what they were talking about here. They were talking about bringing clarity to when you speak to your spouse. They're talking about repeating what you have to say, saying, do you understand or making sure that they heard you. They heard what you were saying or not what you think you were saying. So let, let, let's let's talk about that because what are some ways that we can get clarity? What does that sound like? Let's put that in the audible form mm -hmm. for our viewers to, to know exactly. It's for instance, if we're talking about a conversation, you and I are handling business or or we're discussing what we're going to eat, what we're going to do, mm -hmm. and then we, we just repeating it back can clear up the assumption. You could just say, so so that we're clear. I can start the conversation off right there. Mm -hmm. So that we're clear. So we're going to go to New Orleans and do this and do that. 
and I wait for a response. Yes. If I don't get the response, I'm not, we're not clear. Right. If I don't get the response, we're not clear, which is going to cause a problem because now we're going to, we're going to spend the most of our time in the car arguing about, well, I thought we were going there. Well, what made you think we were going there? Well, you didn't say nothing. I thought you would, I thought uh-huh. you didn't want to go there. And there it is. It becomes a very toxic thing and it seems small, but it escalated to something very it does. big. It does. I, I'm reminded of a conversation that you and I had um, about love. When people say, I love you, then this is just an example. So. You, I can look at a person and say, man, I love you. And what? And they can say, I love you too. So when they say, I love you too, I'm assuming that they are saying they love me and their love includes this and this, the same things that my love includes. But when I say I love you back, they can assume that my love includes everything that their loves include. We could yes. be talking about two different types of love. Or the ingredients that fill up the love basket. Right. So it's not enough to just say, I love you. You said, I love you. Um, we had we had a discussion today. We did. Um, on the way here. And uh, I said, um, well, that was last night. I said, I'm your wife. I'm happy to be your wife. Oh, yeah. And he just lit up. Yeah, so, I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm happy That's to be it. your That's wife. He heard a whole a whole lot of things that come with me being his wife. Well, today on the way to uh to to the office, he said, I want to I want to take you. I want to go somewhere with you. Yeah, let, let's go do something tonight. Yeah. I want to take you somewhere. I want to go somewhere. I want to go somewhere. Let's go to you. New Orleans and go eat. And, and go so, spend time together. Yeah. So he said that. I heard, girl, you look so good. I want to put you on my arm for the whole world to see. I want to spend ah. time with you. I want to ah. buy you something. I want to see you smile. <laughs> I heard all of that in. I want to go somewhere with Glory you. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. You see, we, we hear it different. And it's important that we get that clarity. So yeah. the next toxic thing, uh, I mean, that toxic thing that we're on right now is never make those assumptions. Don't assume that your spouse know what you mean. Don't assume that your spouse know what you're talking about. Don't assume that your spouse get the point. Don't ex- don't assume that your spouse understand. Get the clarity. Another way that it sounds like, it doesn't just sound like so that we're clear, it sounds like um, 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 going forward. When mm-hmm. we want to make a change in life, we would talk about something and, mm-hmm. and then go ahead and elaborate on that statement. So going forward means this. OK, I, I forgive you. Let's make the adjustment and the adjustment looks like this. Whatever that adjustment looks like, that's going forward. So going forward, if it's um, if it's um, you didn't call me when you got off work. I'm disappointed in that. I wanted you to be able to. I want to know that you're safe. And then I say, well, going forward, when you get off work, I would like for you to call me. Right. Yeah. So that's how you never assume you get rid of the toxic toxicity, 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 toxicity. I'm going to get it right in just a moment. That's the Shreveport. That's the Shreveport. That Hollywood coming out of (laughs) (laughs) it. All right. Uh, So here's the thing that you need to do when you're dealing with making assumptions. Here's the solution to that. Slow down. Choose your words and with respect. Convey your thoughts. If you cannot do it with respect, then wait until you can be respectful in how you convey your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Choose your words. Slow down. Choose your words. And with respect, convey your thoughts. And afterwards, get confirmation that both of you are clear on the subject. I promise you, this is going to help your relationship. Y'all got to share this video. Yes, y'all have to. Y'all got to share this video. Y'all have to. Let's go into the third. Let's go into the third one. The third toxic habit. I feel like I'm getting all the juicy ones. Like, oh my God. I don't know. That assumption was juicy too. Yeah, it was. Okay, being judgmental. We have to stop this, y'all. We have to stop being judgmental. This is the third toxic. It's toxic. We are often most critical towards the ones who are closest to us. During a personality assessment, you will realize that your spouse is very different from you. And that difference has to be looked at as a gift. Let's talk about that. The personality assessment in our office. We're also the uh, CEO and the COO of um, Solutions Counseling Services um, that practices um, uh, licensed professional Christian therapy. Yes. Um, but in that, we give a large portion of our clients a personality assessment, That's especially right. in interpersonal relationship therapy. Yes. And every client, we haven't found a client yet that is exactly alike. No. We haven't found one yet. No. You that, mean as a, in a relationship or just in a relationship? Either way. In a relationship. Yeah. 
No, they have similarities. Mm -hmm. But it, it, we find that it is true that opposites attract. attract. We find that true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's an important thing. So during that personality assessment, you begin to realize that your spouse is different. And you got to see that as a gift. It's a blessing. It is a gift. It's a blessing. In fact, you should never make your spouse feel wrong for being different. <laughs> he told me that Hollywood had a thing in the <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Amen. You should never make your, false, your spouse feel wrong for being different. Instead, you should learn to accept and respect your spouse for exactly who they are. Whoa. Whoa. Now, this is Whoa. one of those habits that will creep up on you because you're so used to doing it your way or the way that mama did it or the way that we did it in our house. And this is the way. And if you're not doing it the way we did it in our house, then you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. could easily creep in. Yeah, because you're familiar with that. You're mm -hmm. familiar with the way that you were raised and the culture that you grew up in and the environment that you grew up in. And you did things a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and the truth is, just because they did it in your house don't mean it was right. Right. It doesn't mean it was the only way either. Yeah. So there's something you said that is very important. You said never make your spouse feel wrong for being different. Mm -hmm. Just because you have a different approach or a different way of doing it does not mean you're wrong. Yes. And then sometimes we can begin to make you feel belittled because of men can do that very well. Mm -hmm. That we can begin to make our wives feel belittled just because they have a different approach to something or they're different in how they see things. What's the big, what's the biggest argument or disagreement women, men and women have? Oh, the biggest one? Driving in the car. Which way to go? Oh, we directions. You're right. <laughs> that, 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 that is the most frequent one. I haven't met a wife yet that agrees with the route that her husband takes. We always feel like the wife always say he go out of the way. He got a better you got a better route. He go out he always go out of the way. I would have went this way, it's a shorter way. And he felt like she always telling me how to drive. I'm driving the car. Let me go the way that I want to go. You heard You mean to tell me I heard you do the man's voice and everything. <laughs> You did the man voice and everything. I mean, I got a question. So you mean to tell me there are other women that act like this? I have not met another wife who didn't agree with me. Wow. With me. Women, is this true? Ladies, men ladies. Men go out of the way. It's like y'all deliberately take the longer route to us. We take the longer route. I think that we take the more convenient route, and it may be longer, but we calculate traffic. We're solution-minded, so we're thinking, all right, let's navigate through this a lot faster. Come on, fellas. We need you to chime in on this subject right here. Ladies, we need you to chime in on this subject right here. And just because your spouse take a different route or do something differently or don't like the things you like or speak or enunciate their words a little bit differently mm -hmm. or come from a different background ground does not necessarily mean that they are wrong and you cannot make them feel wrong for that. You got to learn to celebrate the differences. I feel a tugging on my heart right now to just say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to pray for strength for women, Lord God, as we <laughs> we renounce the spirit of being judgmental when our husbands drive. Yes. They have the right to go the way that they want to go, Lord God, and we have a right to lean on you and your strength for patience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, now, I just, I had to do that and I feel I feel some of my women saying, amen, glory to God. Another thing about this being judgmental, though, before you and I got married, we talked about it. We made an agreement that we would develop our own culture in our home. Our own culture in our home. And we would, we would step outside of maybe just doing things just the way that we were raised because we wanted to develop our culture. We wanted to develop uh, our our own thing in, in, within our home. Now, there have been times that we have we have lost track of that. In, in, in disagreements and arguments and say, well, I just don't see it that way. And that's okay. It's okay to disagree. But I just want to make that point that it's very important that you don't just try to, to, to follow what happened, what your parents did. You can't do that. You're not your parents. They're not their parents. And things are not going to go exactly how it went in your home as you were growing up. Make it a priority to develop your own culture. Make it a priority. There are going to be some great qualities that come from the culture you were raised in. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some things that you can add to your own culture. Mm -hmm. But that's the purpose that the uh, God gave us the scripture over in Genesis chapter 2 that a man shall leave his father and mother wow. and cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. that 
there has to be a moment of breaking free moment of, 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 of OK, this is what I was used to. Mm -hmm. But this not may not necessarily be the best thing for my home. And also now, of course, it has to line up with the word of God. Of course. We want it to line up with the word of God for death. For sure. You cannot expect a relationship to be successful when you do not get the author and the creator of that relationship involved in that relationship. That's right. So you got to get God involved. And when you crown Jesus, the Lord of your life, I mm -hmm. want to go ahead and say that then you begin to submit to his way of doing things, submitting to the voice of the spirit and the way of the king in your yes. marriage, that your marriage itself becomes kingdom. It should become so kingdom to the extent that people ought to be able to look at us and then say, I want to give my life to Christ. Just by looking at us, we didn't preach. We didn't, we didn't give a scripture. Right. They just should see how we interact and they ought to be able to get a glimpse of how Jesus deal with his bride and want to get saved. That's so right. that's important. That So never make those assumptions. Never make those assumptions. It's going to be important for you to do that. A great point also um, in this being judgmental thing. Um, I mean, make, being judgmental. I said make assumptions. Yeah, being judgmental. Being judgmental. It's um, that... Um, uh, we talked about Christ and being kingdom and the golden rule, the golden rule, you know, the golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a twist on it. If we look at it from this being judgmental and we can also throw in making assumptions in there instead of treating others as we want to be treated. Why don't why don't we do this? Why don't we treat them the way they want to be treated? Why don't we stop assuming that they want to be treated exactly how we want to be treated yeah. and assume, assuming that the way that they want to be treated is wrong and you should be wanting to treat this way? Why don't we just make an agreement right now to treat our spouses the way they want to be treated? How do we know how they want to be treated? We have to pay attention to them. And we have to have that conversation. And we have to be okay with with their way. Yeah, we have to have that conversation. We have to know most people are in a relationship, especially new relationships, mm -hmm. but our people are, I mean, existing, lasting relationships. They're in a relationship and they're in a season in that relationship where they're not, they don't know what they expect out of one another. Right. So they are assuming mm -hmm. that it's the same way. And then when it's not the same way, they're being judgmental because things have changed and things are different. Mm -hmm. And we can't sit, uh, a lot of ladies experience this. At, there's a point where we feel like we lose our voice. And we can't assume or expect to be treated the way we want to be treated if we haven't voiced how we want to be treated. Hello. Yeah. Whether it's welcomed or unwelcome. This is grown up conversation. This is it. This is it. Whether it's welcome or unwelcome. Sometimes you got to say, hold up, homeboy. Hey, bro. Listen. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, but, but this is this is what it sounds like when you're dating. What's your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. Once I get married, I'm not asking that stuff no more. I should know that stuff now. And if I don't know it, I ask it at the beginning. Once I get into this marriage, I got to have conversation. Are you happy? Are you pleased with the way that I communicate with right, you? Is right. there a better way that I could do this? What is an alternative approach to this situation? You got to have those type of conversations in order to be successful. Yeah, and get out of the monotony because what you enjoy once enjoyed at the beginning of the marriage yeah you may want to do something differently you gotta switch it up i believe it was michelle burton that just said that an alternative approach makes things super spicy yeah super spicy Hallelujah. that's what i'm saying now now we're going to go into this point how do i fix this being judgmental this is a simple way of fixing it the way to confront and overthrow this behavior of being judgmental is to verbally give god praise for your spouse's differences wow. this act will build an appreciation for them and their differences yeah. so when i recognize that you're different I don't I don't begin to make you feel bad for that. I begin to say, Father, I thank you that my wife is a lot more compassionate than I am, mm -hmm. that she's able to be in touch with emotions and, and, and feelings and situations and that she sees the bigger picture. I thank you that my spouse um, has a heart for others mm -hmm. where I may be a little stern that you have a heart for others, right. things of that nature. Yeah. And you just begin to give God praise for those things. And it builds our appreciation. Yes. And, you know, and in maintaining that perspective that your spouse is a gift from God. I mean, when you didn't have him and you was praying for him, you was praying for your gift from God. Ooh. Now, when you get him, don't stop looking at him as a gift. He's still that gift. Yeah. And you should appreciate him as such. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's going to help you in your relationship. Yeah. Those are three toxic things that we've, we've addressed already. Now, something happens when you begin to expose them. When God began to expose a thing, it immediately begins to lose its power yeah. to deceive. Yes. It loses its grip of deception on your yeah. life. Yeah. It can't deceive you when God exposes it. That's so right. we're exposing these toxic habits that may be working under the radar. Uh, because actually, if your relationship is unhealthy, it's because you have unhealthy habits. That's right. So so that first habit was refusing to listen. The second habit was making assumptions. The third habit was being judgmental. And then the fourth habit is something we're familiar with right now, a heavenly hope um, that we're teaching on. And it is being, being stubborn. stubborn. That is a toxic habit. Yes. Being stubborn. Man. Wow. All right, we gotta unpack this one. <laughs> we gotta. This is mine. You said you got yeah. all the juicy ones. Yes. Okay. All right. Here are the traits of being stubborn. Just in case you don't know what it means to be stubborn in a relationship, we're gonna give you five different traits that'll show you if you're being stubborn. I mm -hmm. read one, you read one, and then we. Uh, I mean, we'll talk about them as we go. Okay. Uh, the first one, if you're being stubborn, if you don't know if you're being stubborn, this is the first trait of being stubborn. You are firmly attached to your beliefs, your opinions, and your ideas. Wait, I thought that was a good thing. No, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not a good thing. Um, it is actually that you don't want to listen to no one else, that your way is the only way. We, I think in our relationship, we address them because you point them out in me, I point them out in you, and mm -hmm. we'll say, is that an absolute? Why did you form that as an absolute? Mm -hmm. um, an absolute is when you have your opinion about a situation and it is the only way that it could be mm -hmm. and is the only thing that could be done or the only thing that could be said. And you are so attached to the way you see things that you are stubborn and you don't want to receive from anybody else, including your wow. spouse. Wow. I get it. Yeah. Another one is you struggle with apologizing. That that means you're stubborn. That means you are stubborn. Wow, wow. When you stuck when you struggle with being that's yours to talk about. <laughs> when I, you have to apologize and you feel like you had a whole mouth full of sand, you might be stubborn. You you, you might, might be, be you you are stubborn. Not you yeah. might be, you are stubborn. When you can't apologize, I mean, and sometimes that's cultural. Yeah. Sometimes we grew up in a household where nobody never apologized. We just we, we, we just shut down from one another. And then later on, at some point in life, just started back mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy for the relationship no. when you can't admit that you've made a mistake or you've done something wrong or you want to peace bad enough to apologize. That takes a certain level of maturity and even enlightenment because sometimes in a relationship, in a relationship of marriage, you apologize apologize anyway you apologize to move forward you apologize you're not necessarily wrong well i was i wasn't trying to say that because that that, that could you be, make peace you make peace you make peace right or wrong you say i don't want to be so right i don't want to be right so much that i'm going to sacrifice this relationship yeah so I'm going to go ahead and apologize. Yeah, you go ahead and apologize because, I mean, you don't look for justification when you make an apology. You don't say, well, I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't say it that if you wouldn't say it this. Yeah. You just say, I apologize for what I said. Yeah. And, or I apologize. This went way further than I wanted it to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that being stubborn is um, is definitely extremely unhealthy for the relationship. It's mm -hmm. toxic. And, and again, the third thing, if you don't know you're stubborn, here's the third thing. You don't receive correction. Hmm. Boy, I mean, this is something. Now, listen, we practice this stuff in our own, <laughs> own home. We have to. I, I mean, we, we're like, we're like <laughs> old gunfighters in the Wild West that met out front of the saloon with our phones when it comes to Google. Like, we, we, got to, we pull that phone out real quick to prove the other person that I mean, no, this is what it is. And then sometimes when the correction is there we still struggle with receiving it because of being stubborn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I can attest that men may struggle with. I know that I, um, I'm i growing from that and mm -hmm. maturing from that myself. Mm -hmm. um, well, when I say that I'm growing from that, which means that I'm developing, I'm still a mm -hmm. work in progress in that area, but, but I'm pulling down the stronghold to make sure that I'm making uh, the adjustments and that I receive the correction. And can I say this, um, and I'm not, it's not a man bashing thing, it's, it's just, strictly from the therapist perspective, that men, you struggle with receiving correction from a woman. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, 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 that, that's, that's if they were not necessarily raised, surrounded by women as the authority figure or something like that, that they may struggle with it. Because there are some men that struggle, that don't struggle with it, but they were, they were of course, raised in that environment. But men do struck, tend to struggle. Like, I can't receive, especially your wife. You will miss out on your blessing like that. And then women. Women. I mean, and again, it's not bashing you, but from a therapist's perspective, there are some men who struggle. I mean, women who struggle with getting correction from a man. Wow. Because of things in their past that have happened. My dad let me down. How's a man going to tell me something? Or I was abused by a man. How You can't tell me nothing. We will miss out on our blessing. Being stubborn. In those areas. Yeah, and, and we want to make sure that we are offering um, offering an opportunity for you to recognize this. Remember what we said. Don't, don't begin to look at your spouse and say, oh, yeah, this fit them. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself and say, am I doing this? Because if you mm -hmm. truly want your relationship to get healthy, it's not going to magically happen. Right. God is not going to magically turn it around. What he's going to do, he's going to answer your prayer with principles to apply in your relationships yes. to bring health and stability, success and laughter. Come on. In the house, in the house. Yes. So yes. Uh, you don't receive correction. And number four, the fourth, the fourth um, idea uh, of being str stubborn is you strongly desire to be right about everything. everything. You desire to be right about. It is. It, it goes beyond. Everything. I think it goes beyond the desire to be right. You do. You have to be right, and you have to make sure that everybody knows that you're right. It's, it's not just oh, I, I was right, and you sit back, and you cool with saying. I knew I was right. No, you got to make sure that the person you talk to know, I told you this. I told you I was right. Look, look, no, no. The conversation is not over until you hear the other person say, okay, all right, you were right. I get it. I, I get, get it. it. I get it. That's stubborn. Yeah. That's stubborn. That's stubborn. You don't, you don't want to be like that because you'd be so caught up on being right that you will argue your point or beat a person down, wear them down with... I mean, you're so caught up with it. No, I'm going to prove it. Some stuff you just got to let go. Right. You just got to be like, it's not important enough. Yeah. Is it, is it important enough? You being right. Craig Comanche. The, come on. Give, the, give, us, <laughs> give us my brother. Boom. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? My brother Craig Comanche. Dr. Craig Comanche told me that and it just really just shook my world. He said, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Yeah. Some stuff you just got to be like, okay. And it's fine. Amen. That's fine. That, that, that's not an issue that I should take on myself. I'm not the, the teacher in my relationship. Yeah. And that's what you got. You got you to relinquish your, your control to think that you are the teacher in the relationship. You're not. You're, you're not going to be able to just teach everything. Now, the next thing, in case you don't know that if you're stubborn, here's the next attribute. You have a strong resistance to change. Mm. People change. Mm. Things change. The landscape of your relationship changed. The landscape, uh, the expression of your relationship changed. All of that changes over time. And you're so locked in on the way things are that you don't even know that you look like in the 21st century. Um, you look like uh, Miss Seeley and Mr. That's who I was thinking the color about. Per <laughs> color purple. They came to my mind first. And then the movie with Denzel that we were watching, I said, this is the press. Uh, fences. Oh. Oh, yeah, I mean, come like, on, man. This is, I mean, this is, this is 2019. You, it's about to be 2020, and you want to act like Mister and Miss Sealy, Miss Sophia. On. One thing that's guaranteed in life is change. Yes, you're gonna grow. Yes, you're gonna mature. Change will happen. So, so stubbornness. You have to recognize the stubborn stubbornness. Be honest with yourself. It's okay. I, and, and like I told you at the beginning, we may cut you open, but we're going to stitch you up back, stitch you back together. I hear somebody saying in the spirit, oh, that's me. Oh, my God, that's me. Somebody's been praying, God, help me, change me. God, I want to be in a better place. I want to be different. I want to stop feeling the way I felt. And your feelings, the way that you feel right now is attached to one of these things that we talked about today. And so if that's you, then, then let us help you because there's a root to this. There's a root to you being firmly attached to your beliefs and opinions. There's a root to you struggling with apologizing. There's a root to you not wanting to receive correction. There's a root to you strongly wanting to be right about everything and not just be right, but just acknowledge that you're right. There's a root to that. There's a root to you resisting change. Wow. Wow. There's a root to it. There's a root to it. And the first step to fit, finding that root 
is to acknowledge that it's there to say, look, yes, i be honest with myself. I have been dealing with this. I want to make an adjustment. I don't know the adjustments to make. What do I do? Yeah. 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 And that's important. I mean, not only do you need to be honest with yourself, but you make the adjustments by realizing, OK, to let down your guard. That's the thing I want to highlight in what you said, that I let down my guard. It's OK for me not to be right mm -hmm. in the relationship. Most people don't want their relationship, their, their, their knowledge to be challenged. Even in the aspect you talked about going directional in a vehicle when we're traveling, mm -hmm. I have the better direction because sometimes we feel like if you challenge what I know, then then you're making me inferior. And that's not true. It's OK for you not to know some things. It's OK for you not to see everything. And you have to truly see your spouse as one mm -hmm. and begin to receive that alternative perspective or that um, that 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 um, additional perspective. That's not alternative, that additional perspective yeah. so that you can begin to get the best out of the relationship and point. out of life. That's a great point that you just made. Some people make it an either or and it's not an either or thing. You can have both. Yeah. Get the best out of it. You can have both. Yeah. Why do I have to choose on which viewpoint when I can just receive your viewpoint? And now I got both of, both them. of them. I got both of them. It yeah. makes me that more that much more equipped. Yeah. It makes me that much more equipped. That's why you have to ask those questions in a relationship. You have to turn to your spouse and say, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Because I want to get your input so that I can get an additional viewpoint. Yeah. And that's important. So make it a practice po apologizing when needed. And uh, I mean, when you realize that you're not being right and things are not doing I mean, you're not doing the right thing. Make, Make it right. Adjustment. Make it right. Make it right. I'm telling you, this is this has been. Y'all share the video. Come on. This has been good. This has been awesome today. Yes, it has. Um, actually, I was um, I was uh, moved by this subject uh, because I'm very serious about our relationship being healthy. Yes. And getting rid of any toxic behavior. So, as therapists, if we can take this approach, you definitely have to take this approach as well. So, make the adjustments. Make the adjustments. It's definitely worth sharing the video. Yes. You know what to do. Like, comment share if you missed it there we go let me fix my glasses with these headphones <laughs> um if like comment and share if you um if you join in late go back and listen to it again yes. also be sure to um 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 uh, tune in to our podcast, our yes. Culture Shift podcast. Yes. You can find it on Anchor Podcast. You can find it on Apple Podcast, Podcast. Google Podcast, or Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Anywhere where podcasts are basically offered, you can find it. Just search in there, uh, Culture Shift Podcast. Go to Apple Podcast, go to Google, Google Podcast, and do us a favor. Log into that, lock into that Subscribe so you can listen to it. To it. Subscribe to yes. it. Yes. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Subscribe to it so that you can have that podcast locked in. And if you are listening to us by podcast, you can tune into us live every Tuesday. It's called Counseling Tip Tuesday. You can search it on Counseling Tip Tuesday or you can like the page Solutions, Solutions, Solutions Counseling, Counseling Services. Services. And we will be on. You can watch us live and you can also catch the repeat on the podcast as well. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share, anything that you have a question about and you would like for us to address briefly, if you have, we will be doing the quote of the day going forward. So we will be picking that up on Monday or Tuesday. And if you have a quote of the